Okay. So um, you all can see I'm using my regular palette of our regular colors that we that we always use. And <clears throat> excuse me. If anybody needs me to remind you of this, have, have me send you a text or something with what these colors are. You should. These are. This is the full impressionist palette. It's what I use in my classes. Um, other people use a limited palette and different things like that, but this palette is what I use. So I'm using this for this duration of just the eye, and I there's a good chance that I will use every single one of these colors that's on this palette to just show you a demonstration about the eye. So um, bear that in mind. I don't just mix up a flesh and use that. That's not that's not the way it's done. <clears throat> I want to talk to you a little bit about the anatomy of the eye. Too often we see things on um, on television or lighting like what I've got here, which the lighting is very much all over the place because that's what the cameras need. So you you might see my eye as just my eyeliner and my mascara and not much else. And um, because that's what we're used to seeing, we think that that's the way we should paint eyes. Um, there's a thing called truth. And truth is what we look for when we are in front of our subject and we're painting what we really see. We never get truth when we're looking at a camera um, image because the camera has one eye. We have two eyes. The camera has no brain. Um, and we just need to get away from thinking that what we're seeing camera is on a, a photographic picture is truth because it's not. That's why I encourage you to paint from life whenever you possibly can. Learn what truth is. And then sometimes you can bring it into your photograph. But usually when you're painting from a photograph, you're not painting from truth and you need to bring in your artistic license to make it work. Um, now, as far as the anatomy of the eye, if you feel and go ahead and feel around your eye, you're gonna feel that there's a bone here that makes a hole in your skull. There's a bone here that comes around and protects your eyeball, which is literally a sphere. It's literally a ball inside that hole that's been created by the bone of your skull. Um, a lot of years of evolution and a lot of years of God's creativity went into making that happen. And you don't want to just ignore it just because you very often don't see that on a flash photograph. So here's the way the anatomy looks. Um, I don't think I'll zoom in quite yet because I might want to talk to you some more, but I will show you using fairly large brushes to start with. When you're painting a portrait, you won't be using such big brushes. But um, I need to big so you can see it. So if you look at it from the side, you've got the bone here like this. And here's this teeth. And the eye is right here in that. The eyelid, there's, there's going to be shading from the eyebrow down to the eye. And this is going to be an adult that I'm drawing, then the eyelid sticks out and protects it further. So the eyelid has thickness to it. Then the bottom eyelid also sticks out and has thickness to it. So the temptation is to draw it as if it has eyeliner on it, but that's not really the way it looks. What really happens is that the The thickness of the eyelid has light on it right here, right there, where it meets the eye. Let me cover this part up better so you can see what I'm talking about. So if the eye comes down to it like that, and then the thickness of the eyelid has light on it under there. Um, so you see how I now already have kind of a three-dimensional looking eye just from that. So if, I really want you to understand that, that anatomy when you paint it, because if you don't, what you're gonna wind up painting is an eye that looks like this, sort of like an Egyptian or a cartoon or something, you'll, you'll wind up painting this. 
and this is what I want you to avoid. So now I'll do one demonstration of the eye open and one with it closed or partially closed. And I'll start with this brown underpainting and then switch to color. Go ahead and zoom in just a little tighter. Yeah, I will, I will. Okay. I just wanted to not do that until I was ready. Now remember that we've got this this hole in the skull and the eyeball fits down in here. It fits down in here. So even on children, there's quite a bit of shading around, around that orbit. And there's roundness visible from the sphere of the eye. So I will go ahead and zoom in. Let me see about where I can get this zoomed in more. Come on and zoom. Change remotes. No, I'm on the right remote. Um, here I come. Okay, I'm gonna get a little closer even. So there's that. One of the things I sort of like to do when I'm doing an eye is I like to just go ahead and paint in that whole, that whole shadow just to start with. I just get that, that shadow in there. And then I can use my rag to wipe out some, some lights. Now, in this case, the light is going to be coming from the left. So I get some light coming in from the left there. Now this is not what I'm asking you to do. It's just one way that I can really emphasize in my demonstration that that shadow is so important. <clears throat> now I'll get the, get the upper eyelid, the shadow of that upper eyelid. I'm using dark, I'm adding blue and I'm kind of overemphasizing all this stuff to try to get it across. That the upper eyelid has thickness and then the iris. And I just start out with darkness. I'm not at this point, it's like anything else. I'm, I'm trying to indicate light and shadow. I'm not, I'm not indicating the color of anything when I'm doing this underpainting like this. So you see that this starts out very simple. Now I'll get the darkness that's under the eye, this part under here. You see how I'm not giving it eyeliner, I'm giving it, I'm giving it form. And form is what we go for in painting. We're trying to get truth. And the truth of, of what we see is the motion, the movement of light and shadow on form. So that's probably enough of that um, with the underpainting. Now I'll show you what I do with the color. Um, let's say I want this to be a fairly pink toned individual, but I want to have shadow. Um, I'm going to move this down a little so you can see me mixing. That's why I that's why I put the palette up here. There we go. Let's see about. Moving over this way a little bit and I'll zoom in just a bit more. Whoops, that was too much. Okay, all right. So you see how already in the underpainting, we already have the form of the eye. <clears throat> now I begin adding color and I'm starting with, this is a cooler color. This red right here is cooler than the orange. This red is cooler than this red. So we have, our hottest temperature is right in here. It gradually cools as it goes over this way. And it gradually cools as it goes over this way. Going over this way, it's getting cooler and darker. 
going over this way, it's getting cooler and lighter. So that's something that's important to know when you're mixing colors with the Impressionist palette is temperature. And the reason this palette is laid out the way it is, is so that you can think about what you're doing with your color temperature. And you, it helps you make good choices. So right now I'm kind of experimenting with what I want to do on the cool colors of this eye. These are the, the cool shadow colors of this eye. I'll try putting it up here. I think I want to have it a little pinker than I've got it. So you see how I, I make several stabs at it and then I do a little test, see if I like it. And I think what I might do to cool it is add more of this red up in here. So you see how I'm not, I don't have a big old pile that I'm working with. I have, I have a sort of a little trail that I'm leaving for myself so I can know how I made the colors. This color right here is one of our cool reds with blue added. And now I'm going to go back to this warmer red with blue and white added over here because there will be a little bit more light over here. Do you see how I'm adding these colors? I think what I want to do pretty soon is put, I'm going to put, I'll show you what happens when it shifts over to light, to the light side. You'll use white with yellow. If there's light right here, you'll use white with yellow. And then right at the shift, right in here, it's going to be warmer right in here. Now I'm doing it of extreme so that you can see it from where you are. But these are the colors that you use. Now I'll clean this off because I'm done with that bunch of experiments and I don't want my palette to get to be messy. When I'm done with an experiment, and these are all experiments, they're always, they're always experiments. And some people like to go through these, if you're a portrait from life, you need to do these experiments ahead of time and get them all pre-mixed because your, your person will get tired of watching you do your experiments. So that's just kind of a tip about that. Now, I want to get this part, if the light's coming from over here, there'll be a lot of light here and not very much light over here. So I want to get this part plenty dark. So I'll use my darkest red and my blue and a little bit of white to get some real darkness right in here. And maybe in the fold. Now this is an adult eye, so there will be a fold there. And get some darkness, some of that darkness here. And now I've established this darkness in here. I want to get this, which won't be quite as dark as this. Again, I'm going to start with this, this red and add blue to it. This is, this is the warmer of my two reds. I add blue to it and a little bit more white than I added up above. So I've got some darkness here, but not as much as I had up above. I don't want it to really look like there are bags under the person's eyes. It just has to look like the form that's there. <clears throat> there will be some light shining here. The light's coming from here and as the nose begins to stick out, there's going to be some light here, but not bright direct light. So I move over to this color. This is the orange. So you see me moving this direction when I want it cooler and darker, this direction when I want it warmer and lighter. Add a little bit of white, maybe a little bit of my cooler red. And you see how I'm leaving a little trail for myself on my palette as I mix these things. I'll try this one, see if I like it. Yeah, I think that works. And now I'll get some of this skin color and I want to use a bigger brush for that. 
that'll be, it'll have some light on it. So I'm starting with a warmer color. And I make it so it's not quite so bright by adding some of my blue. I'll test it, see if I like it. I think I'll add a little more white. Test it, see if I like it. Yeah, I think that's going to work. I'll get this color on here and kind of soften, soften this so that the shading is there, but it's just not really in your face. I think the camera kind of lost some of it, so I will, I will push this a little bit, make it a little more extreme so you can see it better. Um, what this is, we're trying to show form. And where the this sphere fits down into the occipital lobe and or cavity or whatever it's called. I'm not a doctor, but this sphere fits down into that hole. And then the face begins to stick out again right here. And um, so we're going to show that. Now, we want to have light over here because the light's coming from over here. So I'll go to my light color, my yellow. I add white. I think I got some red into it, but get my yellow and my white and put it here. This is a really sunny, sunny uh, outdoor thing I'm showing here. And the sunlight outdoors is best portrayed as yellow. The shadow is best portrayed as blue when you're working outdoors. Now, before I do these eyelids, I'm going to do the iris. This will be a blue eye. So here's where I'm picking up some of my nice bright blue. This dark color that's on there. It's going to be good for my shading, the shadow, because this thickness of this lid does cast a shadow, cast a shadow down on the eye. And I'll get this really dark color for the pupil right in here. Really dark color for the pupil. And now I can start to add white to the blue. I start dark and work my way toward light because once you get too much white on there, you can't go back. It's really hard to go back. A lot of times on the eye, there's more light on the right than there is on the left. It's because the, those of you who know about eyes, there's a, there's some like fluid in the, I don't know. I don't know what it's called, but there's fluid there. And the thing that happens with liquid like water is that the light shines through it and it kind of looks brighter on the opposite side than you'd expect. And now the eyeball itself is not white. It's blue or yellow, depending on the person. But the mixture I like to use is this same real subtle mixture of see if you're seeing it. Yeah, you're seeing it. The same real subtle mixture of um, <coughs> cerulean and cadmium red light that we use for the sky and things like that. It's a subtle and it gives you the possibility of making it a little pinker as it gets toward the corner of the eye where there's more pink and a little less pink as it gets toward other areas. So I like this mixture. because it has a lot of subtlety to it. Now there's going to be cast shadow from that eyelid. And um, Diane, the uh, David that I want you to get, that David eye, it's good to study that because it, you can really see that cast shadow from the eyelid on the eye when you study that thing. So I'm putting that cast shadow on first.
then I'm going to darken it up here where there's cast shadow on the iris. And then the area, the area where there's less shadow, you see I'm still not using white. I'm using this gray that I mixed up. I'm saving white for the specular highlight. And now where there's light on this lower lid, let me get a little more pink in the corner of the eye here. That's quite, quite a bit of blood visible underneath the surface in the corner of the eye. So for this lower lid, for the lids, which I'll put on now, I'm gonna just put both lids on now. And I'll start with, start with my warm red and add some white. I might tone it down with some ultramarine, but we'll see. Yeah, I don't think I need to. And it turns, turns from shadow to light. There's gonna be light on here. So I'm using my yellow mixture. And then there's that yellow mixture, yellow and orange mixed with white for the lower lid. And it comes right across the bottom part of the iris. Now I'll zoom in on it. I've deliberately not put on any eyelashes. <clears throat> it's really not necessary to put eyelashes on. And you see how there is no eyeliner. It's really important that you understand that. Now, the very last thing, while we're zoomed in, I'll put a specular highlight. And that's the, the time we use white, pure white, for the specular highlight. And that's going to be on the side where the light is coming from. Specular. Specular highlight. This is the bright highlight where the light is coming from on that side. Oh my. See, that makes it come alive. And then there it's may be, because there's a little bit of water in the eye, there may be a little bit of highlight just along <laughs> that edge. And that makes it come alive. Beautiful. <laughs> You see how different that is from, from a cartoon, you know? Yeah. So now I'll make an eye that's closed and I'm gonna kind of do it the same way. Can I ask a question about this? Yeah. Um, did you um, exaggerate the darkness of the upper eyelid in order to show us, or would you typically use colors that, that um, deep? That, um... Well, I did exaggerate it. I can, I can back off on it a little bit, but there is quite a bit of shadow uh -huh. in the upper eyelid. I'm, mainly, I'm really trying to get you to understand that the shadow, if you want to have a line at all, it's going to be on that upper eyelid, not the lower eyelid. Right, right, right. Okay. Okay. It. I'm softening it a little bit like this. Yeah. And you can, you, can, you can soften things like this. If you want to make it look like there are eyelashes and stuff, you can kind of go back with a dry brush and soften it like that. Um, but softer generally is better than harder, but mostly I really wanted to get across to you that if there's going to be darkness, it'll be on the upper eyelid, not the bottom eyelid. Okay. So now for the closed eye, I'll kind of do the same thing. I'll zoom back out again so you can see my palette. Gail? Mm hmm Okay, you've got light red and then red, red, and then orange. You've got light, medium, orange on your palette. What's the color, what's your darkest, I mean, your coolest color over there by your reds? I'm sorry. Hang on, let me get this organized here and try to answer your question. 
There we go. So this that. this is the yes. palette. This is the right. materials list. And actually, if you don't right. remember our materials list, I send it to you all all the time. Just look it up. Yes. Alizarin Crimson. Okay. Cadmium Red Deep. Cadmium Red Light. Okay. Cadmium Orange. Cadmium uh -huh. Yellow Medium. Uh -huh. Cadmium Yellow Light. Got right. It. Okay. Viridian, Cerulean Blue, Ultramarine. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then Transparent Red Oxide is an addition that I Thank you. Is it the, the Alizarin? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, the alizarin is the, and that's our darkest, coolest red. Okay. Now, for a closed eye, again, I'm going to just start <clears throat> with this dark. Viridian. Well, alizarin crimson is the red. Okay. Yeah, you know, can you tell yeah. us where the nose is? The nose is here. This is the inner corner of the eye. Okay. The nose is over right. here. Okay, I, I, that's why I was confused. You want to see the bunny? Hmm. Okay, so I will go on. And again, I'm going to have the nose over here. It's going to be a closed eye. So I'm starting with just darkening up this whole area. I kind of wipe out a little bit to show you the sphere. I don't always do this, but just in this case, I really want to get the idea across that this is a sphere inside a hole. Sphere. And here's the hole. And I'll, the sphere in children is a little bigger because I think the eye kind of doesn't grow that much. I think it sort of starts out the size that it's going to be. So for a child's eye that's closed or partly closed, as okay. you're dealing with, Diane, um, we're going to have a, a larger sphere and a softer indication of the hole. But it's still there. <clears throat> it's just softer. Now, for the eye that to be closed or partly closed, and again, this is backwards from what you're doing because the nose is over here. Okay. Um, so you won't be able to just copy this. I want you to learn from it. No, I can't copy. Inner corner. <laughs> and then the uh, the shape of the sphere. There's okay. going to be the sun is coming from over here again. Darkness on this side. Okay. All the way around the sphere. A little bit of a little bit of darkness here because they have a little I don't know, there's a little uh, bulge right here that the way they're fat deposits are when they're young. <clears throat> now I'm, I'm exaggerating this and I'll soften it once you've kind of seen what I'm doing here. Hmm. And then when the eye is sort of closed, you still have the same situation that, and I'm going to exaggerate it, the upper lid folds around the curve okay. like that. You see how it's folding around the curve. Uh, <clears throat> the interior, the pupil of the eye is going to be visible. <laughs> and then there will be, I have a good tool for this. The light on the lower lid will be visible there. Wow. If you can see it. Huh. Yes. But there won't be a dark line. There's going to be more of a light line under there. And then to add color, let me clean this all off. Yeah, you can see it. Okay. Sphere, sphere, sphere. I'm going to start with this warm red, add white. Test it up here and see what I have. 
Yeah, I think that'll work for for these areas, these half tones. I'll add a little bit of blue for the shaded areas. Let me let me zoom this in a little. This is much more subtle on a child than it is on an adult, but it's the same principle. You've got shaded areas, mm -hmm. a little more blue on them, and uh, then a little bit of shading visible here. And around like this. Ah. And then the shaded area here. And this shaded area is the cadmium red light with a lot of white and just a little bit of a little bit of blue. Then as you get closer to the eye, there's more pink. So the shaded area closer to the eye might be redder. It might be redder over here. <clears throat> and then the same thing happens on a child as on an adult, which is that with, if the nose is over here, there the nose bones begins to stick out from, mm -hmm. from this hole. Mm -hmm. So we'll have some more light on it. And I think I'll, a little bit, I'll work my way toward, I mean, this direction toward light by adding a little bit of orange along with my white. Okay. So there's the nose sticking out. And then the, the pudgy cheek comes out and catches more light also. So I'll add a little orange and a little white to my pink. And the pudgy cheek is sticking out there. Um, now on the lighter side, and in the case of yours, Diane, I know that there's no direct light on it, but it still has a side that has a little more light. And so what I'm doing with my mixture is adding a little more white and a little more yellow. And then I test it, see if I like it. Adjust it if I need to. There's gonna be light on where the cheek comes out but there will still be shadow underneath the sphere of the eye. You just keep thinking of it as a sphere. Right. You'll realize that there's shadow under there. <clears throat> Amazing. And then, um, so for that shadow, I'll add a little bit more of my red. I think I'll go with a little bit of the cooler red. <laughs> Moving towards shadow without necessarily having to add blue. I'll test it. Yeah, that works. Mm -hmm. Okay, and now with a smaller brush, speaking of brush sizes, if I'm working on a real portrait, I use brushes that are this size. This is a, uh, what is the number on it? This is a number four, and this would be the largest, the okay. largest one. So, um, my smaller brush here. Larger than four, okay. And then get the blue, and again, I'm gonna work from dark to light. Get this blue on here. There won't be a lot of light in this eye. There might be a little bit. Mm. But it does the same thing. The bright, the lightest blue is gonna be opposite the side of the specular highlight. It'll be over on the opposite side of the light. Okay. And uh, let's see color. More of this going. There won't be. There's a lot of shadow in in the eye when it's almost closed like this. Um, and I'm mixing up my blue cerulean blue and cadmium red light mixture for the white of the eye, which is going to be completely in shadow. So I'm getting quite noble with this. 
Uh-huh. There you go. And then a little bit light on the side where the light's coming in. Oh my goodness. And then this lower lid still is gonna have light on it, not bright light, but it'll have light on it. So I'm mixing the color with my red and a little bit of white and I'll test it. That works. And then the upper lid will have some folds. So I'll just add some light to indicate and leave some of that darkness to indicate the fold. And then there's quite a bit of pink in the inner corner, right in there. Now there may or may not be a specular highlight on the light, on the eye when it's closed like this, but there probably will be a little bit of light right here where the water meets that eyelid. So I'll put a little bit of light right there. And I'll zoom in so you see it better. <laughs> It's you know, beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. This is, I don't oh. do portraits because, for the most part, because goodness, I'm kind of shy when it comes to painting. I like to be by myself. Um, but I know how. It's, yeah. it's the same principles as all of the other paintings that we do. It's the same principles. Um, wow. When you're bringing light to it in this <laughs> lower eye, Mm -hmm. How do you decide when to use white and when to use yellow? When there's direct light coming on it, if it's an outdoor portrait and you're, you're working with outdoor portrait, direct light on it will be yellow. You don't ever add, you never add our um, uh, titanium white without also adding yellow. Okay. The only time we ever use titanium white is for these specular highlights. Um, of Goodness. course, you know, you, you add it when you're showing the shadows. If you're, if you're manipulating these shadow colors and you want them to be lighter, then you'll add white for that. But you don't use white. You don't add white to the light side. You don't take your shadow colors and add white. You'll wind up with chalk. But it looks like you did yeah. add white on, uh, to the lower lid. Maybe I just missed you putting some. I in. added white right here, pure white, right, right. there. But then along, along the other side, yeah, right there. Along what? this edge, yes, you add white to your yellow or your orange or your red. Okay. You don't ever just add white to your shadow color. You mix you mix a light color that has more yellow in it and you mix a shadow color that's cooler. So okay. it's very important to lay your palette out like this. So you know yes. if I'm going toward light, I head this direction and add white. If I'm going okay. toward shadow, I head this direction and add blue and then I can I can manipulate that color by adding white to the shadow color. But once you've got these colors and blue, you no longer have anything that can be used for light. Okay. You have to use these colors with white. Okay. So. Ta -da. I hope I made myself clear. I try. Yes. <laughs> all right. So I'll. Uh, Ooh. Have you all seen it enough? Shall I go ahead and, and end the share and let you all get to what you're going to do?